the Forty or Tea podcast. Starting off, I mean, looking back on my early childhood, mm-hmm. what signs of autism did you first sort of see in me, and what encouraged you to go and get um, a diagnosis for me in the first place? Okay, well, I thought I was absolutely smashing it at being a mum because I had this perfect little baby who was slept routinely and woke every four hours and wouldn't sort of make a muff, wouldn't cry when he wanted feeding, wouldn't cry when he did his, you know, obviously messed his nappy and whatever. Um, I didn't, <laughs> Thanks for that. Did you <laughs> well, you ask your mum to come on, Tommy. That's true. You're okay, going to get go, this, yeah. guys. Sorry. Go, go so, um, <laughs> so, so I I thought, oh, wow, I must be amazing first time, Mum, I'm absolutely smashing this. What I didn't realise was that was very early signs of Thomas not communicating to me his needs right from being tiny. That young. Right from being a newborn. However, as he got older, things started to change a bit. And uh, we saw kind of no motivation to kind of move or kind of things or he would become very fixated with lights in particular mm. and that's still the same today isn't it Tom? Yeah. So we have an abundance of lights and sensory lights around the house which is lovely actually it's really nice and calming but something that really helps Tom a lot. I'm just going to have a drink guys. It's all right. Yeah I, th- I think it's um. <clears throat> so like because I, I imagine that with my, with most like babies and kids, they would they would have mm-hmm. that sort of mm-hmm. ignition to like let people mm-hmm. let 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 the parents know that they need something. I think um, I've spoken to a lot of parents with with autism, and I think until you have your second child, you think it's the norm. Yeah, and you kind of. Are quite intuitive with your own child, so you just kind of carry on and adapt your life and adapt things around your child. But it's only maybe when you have your second child or somebody actually unpicks it and points out the differences that you're doing that are maybe a bit unusual, like cutting your child's hair up at night time when they're asleep. Oh, right, yeah. Because I do remember that for that part <laughs> yeah. of things. So you ended up with a lovely little bowl cut quite often, which uh, I think you've improved on the on the hairstyle stuff. Yeah, it's so. um, I do I do remember. I think I just I found like hairdressers mm-hmm. and dentists mm-hmm. and um like hospitals and stuff really hard. I think mm-hmm. like I I do actually remember the situation. I went to one one barber's and there was like mm-hmm. loads of lights and loads of people around, and there was like. I could hear all the hairdressers and I remember just being in a very sort of like I I, I remember somewhat aspects to aspects to that to that experience. I can't remember which when it was, but I think you were about four. We're about four. Mm. Um but I, I found the mm. the that that hairdressers mm. and going to it really, really hard, but also like the stuff around like the clipping of mm-hmm scissors around my ears Mm -hmm. I felt really I was nervous about someone accidentally cutting me but I was also I just didn't really like the like the sound of it for some reason so highly sensory though isn't it yeah just a sensory overload in itself but I think once we'd kind of gone through finding somebody that would kind of follow you around and somebody that was very gentle and Mm. understood and I had a low sensory environment. We were able to get your hair cut, but I was sat outside the barber's the other day, looking in at Tom because I went to pick him up. I didn't stalk him outside. <laughs> so I sat outside watching him, just thinking, "Oh my goodness, you know, this is actually huge." Because all these years later, he's able to actually enjoy going to have his hair. Cut. Oh yeah, I like it. It's it's like a social. I sit there looking in the mirror with everything thing. that used to happen. Absolutely, just make your life a mystery. The the re- I think the the, the mm. biggest reason why there was such a shift in that is because mm. I I went to a um a barber in Manchester, mm. and I I intentionally I went there. I wasn't expecting mm. it to be too bad, but um it was a bit like the the barber was like a very aggressive of like the tugging and 
stuff and i used to like go away with like watery eyes and i even got like my eyebrows threaded and stuff as well because i i kind of i i used that place as like a way to like desensitize myself to it a little bit um might not have been the best the best approach to it because it was very very difficult but i think now now that i found like a a hairdresser that's quite understanding about like my sensory needs Mm -hmm. um it's a lot easier for me and it it doesn't worry me as much i think it's just being exposed to it isn't it it's just i think that's really key actually because quite often when i've spoken to it's not a criticism of any parent but quite often a lot of parents kind of say well they can't do that because they have autism and Mm. i think from your early starts, I used to sort of say, right, we're going to give this a go. And I, I think maybe I was a bit kind of blasé about it. We said, right, we're going to give everything a go. Just say you've had experience of it and we'll move away from it if you're not happy. So we just gave everything a go and um, didn't put a ceiling on your um, on the things that you could do. So you kind of desensitized over time but I think the biggest thing for me was um, there were a few very subtle things like you would sit and do repetitive hand movements well, like when you were a little boy you would sit Go and just <laughs> sit like this just for hours doing yeah. this and you would spin on the floor and you would never get dizzy but you didn't each show milestone such just crawling. Mm. So some children kind of take their time and build up skills, whereas Tom would like not do it, and then all of a sudden he would crawl. Yeah. And then he wouldn't walk, and then all of a sudden he got up and walked. And then but the one thing was he didn't have a speech delay a bit. I think I've got a weird speech delay <laughs> than anybody. Delay now. Than anybody. <laughs> uh, he wasn't delayed in his speech at all. And actually his speech was really well developed. His cognitive ability, his learning was really, really used to good, read a lot. really early. But it would sit and repetitively go through, sit with your granddad actually, and just go through piles of books when he was about two or three and just go through all the books for hours. Really good focus. But then when he went to school, because it was a different environment, different expectations and pressures he actually stopped reading and ended up going in a group to kind of help him to read so it's a bit of a shock yeah so I kind of had I, I those I kind of understand it now but I didn't understand it at the time I've learned a lot more as I've gone along mm. and that was a big shock to me because you were doing so well and enjoyed it and you just you're supposed to go to school to develop those skills aren't you so you it's are, but not, not regress everything else was so overwhelming mm. that kind of stripped back and a lot of parents talk about children losing skills and they do but sort of things kind of take precedence they do lose the skills but then they make the skills up again and the skills do come back quite often mm. in most cases Hey up YouTube, hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. If you want to check out the full episode, you can find it here on my YouTube channel under the podcast section, or you can go to Spotify, Apple, Google to check it out on different podcasting streaming services. If you have enjoyed this video thus far, please make sure to like, perhaps drop me a subscribe if you want to see some more content from me, and drop a comment down below, even if it's something simple like an emoji or a, or a heart. Uh, it really does help satisfy those big, YouTube algorithm gods in the sky. Anyway, I'll let you go back to it. Yeah. I hope you can all hear me okay. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I'll be okay. Um okay. Yeah, there's something that you said about um mm. like um so the 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 speech the speech delay, because the speech delay is something that I get asked about a lot by mm. by as I said, people either in comments or sort of um sending me messages or, or asking me on lives um when, when did i start speaking 
Uh, what, when's like the milestone that most people... It was have? really early. So you started sort of seven, six, seven months. To, wow. And he didn't say mum, mum or dad, dad. He said Bob, Bob, which was... Oh, the dog. The dog's <laughs> name, which was a bit disappointing for me. But, <laughs> but he did lots of bubbling. And that's kind of the difference between kind of autism, well, typical autism, I suppose, and the Asperger's diagnosis as it was. Hmm. Uh, actually, there was no speech delay, so that was kind of all of the differences that I first picked up on with mm. that, because I thought, oh, we can't be autistic, because they also got the speech delay. Mm. But it's the different variants within autism, but as we know, everybody is completely different in their presentation, as we all are. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What about, like, the social elements? Because that's that's mm. something that I think we haven't... Touch on like how did I get on with other kids around that kind of early early age? Okay, so one of the things you did, you were always a bit of a watcher. You mm. would you would kind of a preschool. I remember Mary saying to me, he always stands back and he watches, and then he kind of copies and takes part. Mm. Um, but you were always very wary, but. What you did do, you were very gentle and lovely with other children when you went to play group, but it was always learned responses and learned behaviours. So you would mm. watch me with your brother, and I was, if it was crying, I'd always go, Oh, poor baby, poor baby. So whenever someone cried or anything else in settings sort of outside the home, I was going, Oh, poor baby, and would kind of tap. So be kind of a really, <laughs> it was a really learned response, but he dealt with it that way. So. Yeah. So early on, kind of four to five, mm. you were really not sociable, but you would have friends, you would go to parties. Mm. and um, It's been more of kind of the sidelines, yeah. kind of yeah, yeah. just observing. And... On the sidelines, observing. But I was... If somebody came to the house from a very early age, we had to say to Thomas, Thomas, stop, say hi to Grandad, or can you look, say hi to uh, whoever, because it would just look at the objects in the room and not the people. So we had to kind of do a lot of work on awareness. And he was really um, had a kind of real attack with being with me and would really struggle if I would left the house yeah. and I think that's just kind of because it was unpredictable because it was change and mm. so, uh, so I remember you it, saying sorry. about like Nana mm. like when, when our gra when my gr grandma used to come mm. round I'd like yeah. Like shut shut the door on her and tell her to tell her to go back to her house. Well you did, because I was going to work so it meant change. Somebody else was coming in the house. Yeah. But you'd say, you go to your house, I go mine. <laughs> <laughs> but Rod Nana got the door closed on her, but um, did, did, she kept with did, her did she time. did she know much? Like was she was she very like aware of that Thank stuff or was she just kinda she struggled to understand it because she would come in and say, I've got a surprise for you. And you would go, oh, and you'd have a meltdown because you didn't like surprises. No, you no. liked predictability. Yeah. You liked to know exactly what you were doing, where you were going. But, of course, people typically think you could love surprises and yeah. you didn't. So that was a big, that was a big difficulty, really. Mm. But she got she got the kind of she loved you, so she got to to know what you could cope with and what you couldn't. Mm. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. So mm. yeah. 